All right, welcome to my live stream. Uh, I do this every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, where we are building an app um, that I hope to produce into, oh, I'm sorry, I always forget this part. I need to mute uh, the actual live stream. Um, I am building a personal budgeting app in the hopes of actually launching it into a real app. Um, and so uh, my live stream is just a chance to share what I'm doing, get this out early, maybe even get some early feedback. Um, and I feel like I'm hitting a lot of things that are just kind of fun to share and work on, just a lot of tips on how to work on a React app. Um, and so uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what we well, what what we can get done today. Um, I am actually going to have to leave at 4:45, so this is probably going to be be a little bit shorter than usual. Um, so a few things first. Uh, so I realized if you notice, my Twitch username is jlongster2. Uh, that's because when I try to start this live stream, I signed up for jlongster. It was already taken, which is usually strange because jlongster is not a real typical name. Um, so I just had to do it really fast, and so I did did jlongster2. Uh, turns out I had registered jlongster like a year or two ago with a different email. Um, so I'm going to be moving to. Uh, I'm going to be moving my channel to the jlongster account. So next week it's going to be twitch.tv slash jlongster. I will update the tweet and everything like that. So most people probably won't be confused because you probably just follow the tweet. If you are using the calendar um, invite or the calendar um, event that I created, uh, you, you will have to update that. Just to, so, so just make sure next time do not go to jlongster too. Go to jlongster. Um, this last week, um, a bunch of stuff happened. Uh, first thing, which I'm super excited about, which is unrelated to tech at all, is um, my tomato plant is finally growing tomatoes. Yay! So for a long time, um, I've been growing a tomato plant for like two months, and I didn't realize that it took so long to start bearing fruit. And evidently, there's also this thing where you also have to, uh, if there's not like enough wind or bees, you actually have to self-pollinate, which is a really weird thing to do. Um, but after I did that, like two days later, I got like three tomatoes, and now I'm up to 10, which is awesome. So I'm going to start updating you weekly on that because I think it's super crazy uh, how that works. And next week I might even have more. Um, all right. So um, hey, so cool. Yeah. So you're you're building a budgeting app too. That's awesome. Uh, it is. You know, it's kind of like a to do app or a calendar app. A lot of it feel like it is a pretty common uh, thing to do. And so. Um, I'm mainly building this for me, and so I would like to just have something that I am working on, which is probably what you feel as well. Um, and I, I hope that I provide enough um, utility and uh, functionality where it's useful to others and other people don't have to build their apps as, uh, as well. But yeah, I would love to talk about why you are building your app, uh, Jacob, and uh, let me know maybe, I don't know, maybe we can bounce some ideas off of each other. All right. so. Uh, this last week, I got a bunch of uh, different things done. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is I cleaned up. Uh, so it was really annoying before because I had, as you've seen um, in the past couple of sessions, I have a Lerna repo, um, which has uh, the the desktop front end or the desktop back end uh, Electron, which actually wraps it up into a native app. And then I have the front end, which is client, um, and that is a create React app. So you know I have to come in here and do npm start to to create the React app server. I also have in packages um, not oh I'm not in the um, not a whole lot of things. Man, I cannot type today. But I have two two packages um, in the future. I might have a few more. Um, the loot design is like a separate design repository, so I can go in there and npm start it, and that is another create React app that I can load and just work on the design. Uh, loot core is a bunch of core, just this is the bulk of the app right here, uh, but loot core, um, this needs to be compiled with Babel, and so I have these scripts which uh, compile it with Babel, right? So I can say npm uh, start or npm run watch to run, run the Babel watch process. But basically, every single one of these packages has its own like uh, like watch process, or maybe if it's starting a server, it's starting a server. The thing that is super annoying about that is now I have these four repos that I'm having to juggle the processes and make sure that the, the servers are started and have like four open terminal tabs. I got super annoyed with that. Um, and whenever I wanted to sit down, if I had like 30, 
like 30 minutes of, of free time, um, I would want to sit down and, and hack a little bit on this app. And it would take me, you know, five or 10 minutes to really get into it, get the whole thing set up. Um, so I got really annoyed at that and I decided to spend a little, a little bit of time cleaning that up. So my solution is now I have, I can go into this top level projects. Oh, let me increase the font size. Um, I can go into the top level repository, just type npm start. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to start the desktop app. So it's going to start all the, all of the processes to watch, watch and compile the necessary files. It's going to compile all, all of them up front. It's going to run. Oh, actually it aired. Uh, so this is the only thing that's a little annoying. Um, you have to spe specify the, the loot user. Um, and just to clarify, if you haven't seen before, loot is totally just the prototype name. I haven't come up with the actual name yet. Um, I could I could do, you know, um, some kind of command line thing right here. I think you have to do this. Um, I haven't done it yet for now. It's just an environment variable. The reason I do this is because I am actually using this as my real budgeting app. So if, if I open up James, you would actually see everything about me financially. Um, so I'm not going to do that. And I kind of like right now I'm, I'm forcing you to choose, choose a user so that I don't accidentally default it to James. And then, you know, you all see my finances accidentally. Um, so it boots up Electron. It waits for the development server. So I have this nice little message. It boots up, gets going, and here I am. And that's all, that's all that I have to do now to get started running. Now, if I go and edit a file anywhere, it's going to trigger that watch process. Um, reload this automatically and it's going to work great. And so that's great, right? So now I have just npm start. I can also say start, uh, I think it's start design. Yeah. And this starts that separate design repository, which runs the create react app, um, and also watches all of the core files. And I, there's a couple of things that sort of fell out of this. I actually like that. Uh, the thing that's really nice now is before, if I if I made a syntax error in a file and I saved it and Babel errored out, Babel would not compile the file, but I wouldn't see it because it was it was in a different tab, right? It was it was a different process than the one that I was looking at. So I would go and test the app, but I wouldn't see my updates, and it would take me a couple of minutes sometimes to figure out, oh, there's actually an error, so Babel Babel didn't actually compile the file. It's super nice that I see all of the con the the console logging um, right here, so across the four processes and and. Uh, Lerna has this kind of nice uh, design where it, it prefixes the output of a, um, of a package with the name of that package and it even color codes it so that you can see it, which is kind of nice. So now I can see sort of how all of these processes are, are m m sort of multiplexing over this single thing, which they really aren't multiplexing because they are actually separate processes. But the, con the output is, is uh, multiplexed. So here you can see that just the client, like the desktop client, loot core, loot design, all of it is right here. Um, and what's what I what I discovered kind of solved a pain point for me. Um, I tweeted that I was going to talk a little bit about overriding and create React app. Is that usually actually when you go into let's go into the loot packages, or sorry, the the loot design. So now I'm just going to run npm start, which starts the create React app, right? This is what create React app does by default. It clears your console. It has this, it has this statement and then it clears, clears your console whenever it rebuilds. So it compiled and then it finished and then it cleared and then it compiled. And that's sort of the workflow. I actually don't like that. I, I just, uh, I feel like sometimes I might miss messages because they actually were uh, generated like right before it cleared the console. Um, I just, Usually that's not a problem. I, f I thought this was kind of nice at first and I can see how it's nice for beginners um, because you're not seeing like 10 Webpack um, build outputs. Um, you just know that the one that you're looking at is the right one. Uh, but I just, I like my, my terminal to be more of a normal terminal where I could just scroll back and see all of the, because I can't even, I can't even scroll back. That clear, literally clears the console completely. Uh, so the thing that's sort of nice about multiplexing all of this into one output is that, uh, let's do the design, is that it actually turns off that functionality because it, it, um, it can only do that if it's, if it's connected to a TTY output. So it's gonna, it uses nodes uh, like mechanism for, for asking if its current standard output is a TTY, which means basically is it a terminal? 
And then it says, um, if it's a terminal, I know I can output this special key code command. Because if it wasn't a terminal and you output that special key code command, it would actually, you would see it, right? You would see this weird character in the output. Um, so however, so luckily I'm still in a terminal, but I don't have to suffer that like loading anymore. Um, so Lerna by like Lerna, I just sort of got that by default when I started running the create react app server as a sub process of Lerna, which I actually really like. Um, now, before I started using Lerna, I started, so initially I had uh, a, top, a top level package.json that actually didn't use Lerna to, to do this stuff. And I actually ran the two separate servers uh, like manually, but the problem is, is that then because I was running it right here, uh, create React app would actually still clear the console. So that, that was actually terrible because it, it would, the other process would be outputting stuff and then create React output would clear the terminal. Um, and so I just want to show a really fun trick, which I think is awesome to um, bypass this. So basically I was sitting right here. This is create, this is create React outputs, um, create React apps start script, right? And what it does is it checks if the standard output is a terminal. Well, we can basically tell it it's not a terminal by piping the output to a command. And that command, all, and if, if I can figure out a command that all it does is it takes the input and just re-outputs it to the console, uh, then I'm golden. And the command to doing that is cat dash. And so now, see here, I'll show you what it looks like in packages with design. If I, if I start it now, so it does the clearing, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna pipe it to cat dash, which basically the piping t uh, turns it into uh, uh, the STD out is not my terminal anymore, right? So create React app is gonna be like, okay, I can't clear it. It's gonna pipe it to cat, which cat is just a command which just cats files, right? The dash is a special thing which says, like the dash basically represents standard input. So you're basically telling cat, just cat, just, just display everything that's coming in on the output. So I'm just piping it through cat. Um, and now if I do that, you magically turn it off. Yay. Oh, okay. but there's but there's still a problem here, right? See the difference? There was colors before, but now there's not colors because Create React App actually does the same thing. It actually checks if it's a terminal to see if, if it can output color for the same reasons because it outputs like a special command. Um, well, luckily Create React App uses a library that reads from an environment variable force color. So you can actually force it to use color but still turn off the clearing. And so now we get the colors and no clearing. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe that, maybe that uh, annoyed you as well. Um, the reason why I don't have to do this anymore is because I, I realized that I can just use Lerna, but maybe that, maybe if you're, if you want more control over these things, then uh, you can hack it like this. Hacking around Create React App is sort of like my new like game. It's like an adventure game where I find the vulnerabilities and I can hack into it without having to eject. Uh, it's kind of like a new fun hobby in a way. Um, yes, and now, now that I see this, there's actually one more hack you can do, which this, this one is not really a hack, but if I start server create react app, usually opens up Chrome. Oh, it actually, uh, I have a Chrome instance server here. Usually what it also does, in addition to clearing your terminal, it, it throws you into Chrome and automatically opens that tab, right? Which I just hate that it takes your takes the focus away because there's other times when I when I actually want to go back to the editor, you can turn that off by doing just browser none, and that's something that that's that really is an environment variable that create that create React app gives you. Um, so anyway, so those are a couple of things that you can do with create React app um, to bypass what it does. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, is it really useful enough to make working around stuff like that worthwhile? Apps are freaking lootly because all I'm doing is just hacking around a couple terminal things, uh, but what you get is, is incredibly sophisticated Webpack configuration, all of your Babel uh, configuration set up. Uh, I really just enjoy that it has a lot of really complex stuff. You get hot, hot reloading already set up. It, already, it sets up the Webpack dev server. All of that stuff is way, way more complicated than trying to figure out how to hack just a, a couple of the terminal things. Um, I, I was using a previous version of Create React App that used Webpack 1, um, but at some point they, they uh, upgraded it to Webpack 2, 
and I didn't even have to do a thing. I literally just upgraded Create React app. Um, I, I ran like one command, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it, maybe it was just, you know, in, npm install create uh, React scripts, like a certain version or something. I just upgraded React scripts. I entirely upgraded to Webpack 2 for free without even knowing what happened. Um, and that probably gave me some performance improvements or, 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 or uh, s stuff like that. I never really want to touch Webpack again. I, I, I'm at the point where I am just really, really tired of trying to make sure that my build tooling is not broken. Uh, so having other people take care of that for me is still absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's that's my opinion, at least. Um, if you want to go in and fiddle with it and make it work for you, that's totally fine. All right, so, um, man, time always flies. Um, I'm really happy with, with where I am. Let's, let's start the actual desktop app. What I have done, I can't remember where we really, oh shoot, I have to do the user, of course. Um, I can't remember really where I left off last time, but a lot of the time I've been showing you this transaction table. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. But the thing that's pretty exciting now is that it's actually, it's actually well integrated into this desktop app, which is like the real thing, right? Um, oh man, of course. Of course, there's an error. Um, I wonder. Man, this was this was just working like right before the screencast. That's really weird. I wonder if um, I messed up the the DB. Let me let me uh, re regenerate the new database. So I have I have it working pretty pretty well to. Um, I have this script that makes a new database. And so whenever the database gets screwed up, I can just run that and I have a fresh set of data to work with. So I'm, I'm hoping that it was like I deleted all of the transactions at one point and I'm hoping that that was the problem. If not, we might just have to spend a few minutes debugging this, which is kind of annoying. Oh man, all right, awesome. So one uh, downside, which I haven't figured this out because I just converted this, is that now the output, you know, th the new lines are not getting output as actual new lines. So now the stack traces are messed up. And that, that's a big deal. That's a really big usability problem. Um, but I won't spend time trying to figure that out right now. I'm going to try to figure this out. All right. So this is at the database layer. Um, so you got index. Let's look at which layer of this do I want to go into. Let's look at the server DB. Um, and this is the other annoying thing. If I want to debug this, I need to go into, you know, because it's compiled, I need to go into lib because I actually just want to stick console.log statements in here and, um, and actually get the right line numbers. So I know there's like a, a node source mapping library that I can use. Um, so I, I think that DB is not being passed in the right way. 247. Why, how is that? Oh, I see, right, right. Uh, index. The DB should be, I haven't changed anything. This is really weird. Um, Okay, I've changed some stuff, but that's, I don't think anything important. Let me just like go through here. Yeah, I literally, I, this was working just a few minutes ago. Uh, sorry about this. Oh, that's the problem. I'm an idiot. It's test one. I really need to get that, uh, <laughs> yeah. I need to figure out that u that user switching better. So it, it, it wasn't finding a database, right? Because that database doesn't exist. I hope that's a problem at least. Okay. I was gonna say you like this had worked literally in this lot in the live stream already. Okay, cool. Um, so it's important to think about like what you have changed when you are debugging stuff, you know. Um, I'm glad I didn't get too much in the code. All right, so this is the actual transaction table. 
um, that, that you've seen in the other screencasts or uh, live streams. Um, but I'm pretty happy with what this is coming out. There's, there's definitely going to be a lot of design polish, but the actual interaction of it is pretty sweet. Even how you can split the transactions, I can go in here and uh, make changes and it automatically adds that. You know, I can log this away. Um, this is for a burrito, it's food. Um, oops. It saves it. Oh man, of course this is just failing all over the place now. Uh, but it should be saving it. Let's see if this actually saves this time. Yeah, I think I have a problem with the IDs um, and that's not that's something I'll work with later. Um, so there's some of the interactions are going to change as well. But right now you you add a new split transaction by just entering a transaction that's lower than um, like this obviously is not the full doesn't sum up to the to the parent transaction. And so when I save this, it automatically adds the next one with the rest of the amount. Um, Food saves. There's still this weird. Okay, I think there's a problem with saving the um, split transactions, but I'll I'll work on that later. Um, the good thing is, you know, if I save all of these stuff, these things are saved. And so um, if I go into a different tab and then go back, it's refetching them. And so this is actually the saved note, the saved data from the ser from the server. So this is just like showing you that it is actually persisting this data into the back end. For some reason, the split transaction stuff is kind of broken. Um, you know, I can just change stuff here. Oh, I didn't. Chip toll. I have to press enter to actually save it, which, you know, several more inter small small interactions to figure out. Um, but generally, it's, it's, it's actually working and saving into the database. If you delete a parent transaction, it deletes all of the split transactions. Um, a lot of little things in here that this looks like a simple table, but really it's one of those things where to get it into this really, really streamlined sort of spreadsheet, uh, spreadsheet style interface, um, there's a lot of code to really make all of this work, stuff work, like the which row is it editing, which cell is focused, and, and, uh, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm excited because, like, you know, this is starting to be a real app. It's not just in the design stuff anymore. And so um, this actually... This actually updates accordingly. So, you know, this is 49,053. If I change this to five, this should update. So now it's 4857. Um, so I'm not gonna explain how that works because I think I'm gonna try to not explain that on the live stream because I gotta save something for the launch, right? I gotta save, save some some element of surprise for the launch. Um, but there there is sort of the, the sweet sauce, um, the secret sauce in this uh, is sort of this Data propagation system that that I built, which I think is pre which I think is a uh, pretty cool, and and I'm I'm hoping to get into like a beta in the next month, um, and then the beta will be sort of my launch, and then I'm going to live stream working on that part later. Um, but anyway, the idea is that you can change data here, propagates throughout the app. Um, soon, if I had time today, I'd probably work on. I want to list the accounts in the this left section, right, and then I this would actually show you the account balances and so as you updated right here the account balances would update um, but right now you can just see it updating over here as well um, so what I was going to do is right now this code um, the way that I do the CSS and JS is I actually embed CSS straight into the JavaScript um, like let's see so design source components transaction um, I want to clean this up a little bit because this is this is pretty messy code. Um, I think the way it's structured is pretty nice, but it, need, it needs to be split up. There's a, there's too many hard coded values. Um, so I actually really like I like I really like doing this. I know like some of you, this probably looks horrible and terribly messy, uh, but this is embedding your 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 CSS um, right into the component just makes it incredibly, incredibly uh, flexible. Because I can delete stuff really fast. Um, as I'm restructuring the components, um, I can move that CSS with the components. Um, so take it for what you will. I'm sure some of you hate this. Uh, but uh, I find even having to, you know, the React Native API, or the, like the, the React Native idiom usually is to do something like, um, what, you know, category cell, styles.category cell, and then you move the styles above 
here and it's like, uh, you know, con styles equals uh, create style sheet or, you know, it's, it's even just, yeah. And then it's, and then you actually give it a name up here. Um, that's sort of the, the typical idiom for a lot of the CSS and JS solutions where you, even though they're located in the same file, uh, and it's right above the component, like it's so close to the component, right? So that's what a lot of people think. I just, I, I found that I've, I get into the flow a lot more and a lot faster and I can restructure things a lot more if I can just see it right here, because all of these things are design components, right? There's there's a whole separate components which are going to actually um, build up the app and actually hook everything together and have a lot of glue. Uh, but these design these components are meant to have CSS. They're only meant to implement uh, some design and maybe some behavioral things. They're not they don't hook up to any server or any API or anything like that. So to me, it makes sense that there'd be like CSS embedded straight in them. Um, but the problem is, is that there are a bunch of values like this. Like I really do not want hard, hard coded colors and things like that because this is duplicated in several places. So it's hard to change that color. Um, and so what I want to do is I actually want to bring out some of these hard coded constants into one place so I can change one color, one, one padding. Um, and have sort of like a more, more consistent um, theming system in a way. Uh, let's see, are you manually inputting your results or are they pulled in from Bank API? Right now I'm generating a database randomly, um, but I, I do have it hooked up. Like I'm actually using this as my real budgeting app, right? And that is, I do have the ability to actually connect to your bank and automatically import transactions using a service, uh, using Plaid, Plaid, I guess is how you call it. Um, but Plaid is this awesome service for hooking up banking transactions. Um, and so you, you can, do that, but it's just a whole, it's a whole lot quicker to be able to locally generate a database, right? And actually locally uh, just uh, generate sort of mock data. I mean, it's fantastic for tests too. So if I'm using that for development, the, the mocks are always going to be up to date and that means that I can always, um, always use them for a test too. Have I tried out style JSX, uh, which, so there, there are two, there's there's JSX style, and there's there's like there's two that are very close, and I can never remember which one is which. So this one this one is the Zite one. Um, yeah, it's this. I mean, it's the same thing, right? You have to give it like it's co it's collated to it's co-located to the component where it's really close to the component, but you still have to give it a name, which I just um, which I mean I think this is a fantastic library. Like this is they use straight CSS, and so you can just extract this out into a CSS file. Which is, um, which is really nice, but what I like, what I was trying to say was, I literally like embedding it into the style prop and um, Glamour, or maybe, or maybe it's Glam, it's whichever one is newer. Um, actually, I think it is Glamour. They have this ability to actually specify a CSS component, um, and they do all sorts of crazy stuff with that. So I'm probably going to end up switching to that because they have a lot of good tooling built around that. Um, but yeah, I just really like embedding it straight on the view because otherwise, you know. It would look like this. I'd have to give it like a class name. Um, and then with style.jsx, I would put all the CSS down here. But for these components, these are literally design components, right? So this is like, this is the meat of the component. This is the stuff that I'm wanting to work with. Um, so it feels weird to have a bunch of views and stuff up here and then have to like mess with the CSS down here. Cause I'm, I would like, when I was writing this, I was constantly dividing up the views into more views and like moving the CSS around. So I don't know, it could just be a personal thing. I, that's totally subjective. If you like to move your styles elsewhere, um, I am not gonna judge and that is completely a personal opinion. So yeah, I think this is the one that I like. Um, all right, so I think what I wanna do, so I only have 10 minutes. Um, so I think, let's see, mm, yeah. I think I'm going to um, try to clean a little bit of, of this code up. I think, so I'm not gonna do it right now, but I think one thing I do wanna do, you know, this file is 700 lines long. Um, it has, as I mentioned before, I do like having multiple components in one file uh, if they sort of are semantically related and like you usually use them together. Um, this one has sort of evolved to the point where I need to split it up. There's like a transaction table. Um, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff here. So I know I need to clean that up, but I'm not gonna split up into files on the live stream because um, that's just grunt work and that's just not very interesting. 
Uh, what I would like to do is sort of uh, create this theming design system because I also have some design friends and I, I want I want them to be able to sort of tweak this and sort of help me you know think of stuff and so um, they're, they're not going to be able to come in here and figure out how to actually edit this stuff uh, which is is it, it, that is a downside for using this kind of styling system it's not your typical designers might not be able to to work with this a whole lot but I do think that you can mitigate that a lot just by um, coming into so I, I have this file right here that's style.js or style.js um, and I import it at the top of here at the top of my component um, and if I just if I abstract out all the important parts that a designer might want to actually tw like twiddle and and uh, and tweak I think that I think that mitigates a lot like if if the designer is meant to be working on the app and actually building a lot of stuff um, then yeah they're probably gonna have to change their patterns if they're if they're not used to CSS and JS uh, but I do think if a designer is just sort of like implementing colors, implementing a lot of other stuff, changing paddings, um, I think if you structure this in the right way that you can mitigate the learning, the, the lack of familiarity. So let's just, let's start with, um, I think I am using like styles. I have styles. Yeah, I think I'm only using it twice, <laughs> twice right now. Um, whereas if you look at the app, um, there's the color of the, of the edited border. There's the color of the whole uh, table of the whole of all of these borders. There's the hover. There's a hover color. Uh, there's just the text color. There's the color of this label. Um, this uh, this X button. It isn't even styled. Uh, there's font size. So I'm going to try to abstract out some of that stuff. Um, background color. So let's just start with uh, so style. I have colors. I don't think I'm even using. I don't think I'm even using these at all. Um, is that right? And I think I'm, I'm actually going to switch over to the design guy because VM run, sorry, design, because uh, I have hot module reloading and it's a little bit faster to, to develop there. All right, so now I go to a little close 3000. Um, all right, so I'm just going to do, I'm just going to extract out some of this stuff, um, probably not get into anything too interesting because I unfortunately I, have to, I need to run in like eight minutes. Um, but okay, let's see. File successfully. Cool. All right, so here's here's my table. It still works fine even though I deleted those colors. Um, let's see. Let's do this. All right, let's first start with that ed like editing color. Actually, what is, oh, right. So this is the background color of the split transaction. So if I change this, um, then it turns red. Now it's, oh, right, because I, I only did it one. So one thing I'm not entirely sure, I need to talk to some, get other people's uh, feedback about, like, how do I name name my colors? Should I actually do, you know, split transaction, background, um, was red, and then I change this into styles dot split transaction background. Um, you know, I think there's there's differing thoughts on this, like whether you do you call it red or you call it based on what it's used for. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to end up changing this so that it's not called what it's used for, but more of a semantic or more some some other name that indicates that it's a certain shade of color, um, and that way I can it's not tied to what it's actually used for because that seems weird. Uh, let's see. Wait, is this still working? Okay, so I already have a problem. It's weird. <laughs> oh, it's colors. I think I was supposed to, yeah. So styles is just like, uh, 
actual CSS styles, but what I actually want is colors. Okay, so now we'll do colors. Um, and I like I already don't like this. I already feel like this shouldn't be called that. Um, but just something like light, like light background one and light background zero is like the lightest background. Um, AFA. Yeah, that's the same one too. Cool. So is child is where I always apply the CSS. So I can just search around for is child. And those are all the backgrounds. Um, what is this one? For? Oh, that's the hovered background, right? So previously the hovered background was the same color as that, which doesn't look great either. Um, so it's a little, is the hovered FA or F0? Yeah, it's FA. So right now the, the, the hovered background is exactly the same. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. Um, or maybe maybe I don't even apply a background color to the split transactions because there is sort of this design. You can see where it's all of these cells are hidden over here, so it's clearly a sub transaction of this of the other one. Um, but I think right now I'm going to leave that background. But let's change this to um, light background as well. All right, and now let's do colors. You actually use gray. Okay, so that's working now. Um, some of the stuff I especially want to the the border colors is what I'm mostly interested in because um, borders are really really annoying. I had to. <clears throat> uh, there's a reason why why tables are nice in HTML and how they border collapse um, because it is super annoying to to get these like pixel perfect. Um, borders um, when you're not doing tables. So, for example, see if I if I click on a row to edit it, it's it's pixel perfect. Like it actually highlights the right, like the top and the bottom of the cells, and the left and the right. But to change those colors, I have to do all sorts of hacks so that because um, this you know this border right here covers this next cell. Like you don't see a little bit of a lighter gray up here. It actually um, this is actually sharing a, a border. Um, and you know, I'm not going to use tables because tables are just annoying and I, it would be impossible to do this kind of thing right here. Um, uh, maybe not impossible, but I feel like it's just more straightforward to not use tables, but I did have to implement border collapsing. Um, and so changing the border colors is really annoying because they're sort of all, 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 uh, over the place. Um, so it'd be really nice to be able to just change the border colors in, in the, in the theme. So I think, uh, let's see where, where is. Right now, border color is actually, I, I did abstract that up here pretty well. So now, now I can just place it right here and it's um, part of this variable. So now editing is a blue color. So that's actually really nice. I did, I did already sort of fix that problem, um, but I still want to move it up into here. Um, I don't know, maybe this shouldn't even be light background. Maybe it should just be like background um, and there's like, you know, different gradients, like zero through five or something. Um, make one. I'm not, I would love to be a designer. I haven't been trained as a designer, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm, I feel like I can pick out things that look all right. And so I'm hoping that that will be good enough. Three, six, three, six, three, six. Um, and these, I'll, fill, I'll just fill these in later. I'll intentionally create bad, actually I want this one. And this one will be F0. Um, so this one will be colors.background4. I was thinking that that would be the darkest one. I don't know if that's actually true. I might have to change that. Colors.background4.
All right, cool. So now I can just um, come into here and change, you know, fiddle with these. And as I uh, am more into, as I start playing with the the actual colors of the app, which I haven't I haven't done yet. This this whole design is just temporary until I get actually um, some help from a designer and, and implement some of the design myself. Uh, but now I can just come in here and, and, and play with that, which is kind of cool. Um, and the, the background colors are there. What about the light border color? Um, I think that's still in this, yeah. So if it's a child, it's this a little bit darker color and otherwise this is the default border color. Um, and this is gonna be the, the, the lightest. So background zero. Right, was that already F0? Yeah. And then this one is, because the background is a little bit darker on the split transactions, uh, the background is actually a little bit, oops, I actually want this to be two. That's one I haven't used yet. So let's just make this easier. So you see right here, that's messed up. So, so now that looks that looks okay. I, I'm probably gonna tweak this over time. Um, but as long as it stands out a little bit more. Um, so that's kind of the idea. Um, I'm gonna go through here. The next thing I'll do is split up a, 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 like a lot of these things into files. Uh, that way it might not be as confusing as I'm jump like jumping around a lot because there's a lot of components in here, like table, row, all of the cell stuff, which I went through last time. Um, but it was nice having this one file while I was going through a lot of churn. And that's that's typically how I do stuff is I, I just flush things out, delete a lot of stuff, go through a lot of churn um, in one file. And then once I feel like I've settled on the right abstractions, then I go back and do what I'm doing now, which I'm, I'm extracting out the hard-coded stuff, start splitting up in, um, into different files, and then I'll go from there. Um, so I got to run. Sorry, this was a little bit of a, sh of a shorter li um, live stream. I'll try to have something... A little more exciting next time, maybe some real parts of the app and start talking about the budgeting system. Um, and I will go from there. So thank you for watching. Any last questions? I don't think so. So um, as always, let me know how, how, how I can improve. Um, would you like to see me explain more of what I already have rather than just seeing me work? Uh, anything like that, uh, just let me know and I'd be happy to take that into consideration. All right, have a good week. I'll see you next week. Bye.